Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Um, let me let me get into this in the time that we have left, because I want to I want to ask you guys this question. I, I've been telling people this particular story. I'm not going to get into like what happened with me because I've already said it. But um, so my uh, there, there's someone that's a friend of mine and his dad got in touch with me recently. This is, uh, you know, uh, this is a, a black person and his dad got in touch with me recently because his whole life, his dad, he's retired now. He never was into guns or anything like that. And then he decided recently, because of what went down back in D.C., after all the other things, he decided that this was the moment to get into guns, and he reached out to me, right? And I asked him, I was like, why? Why are you doing this now? Like, I think you should definitely, this is something you need to think about and get into, but why now? And he said to me it was because, you know, he was worried about these... uh, these uh, pro-Trumpers out there and what they wanted to do to him. So I'm not going to get into the whole thing with what I told him, but I would just like to know from from each of you, and I'm probably going to start with Kevin Dixie, um, how, how would you respond to that? I'm sure, Kevin, that I'm not the only person going through this. What, w- what would be your response yeah, to yeah. that kind of thing? For me, I'm, I'm not going to let any man or any group of people, um, me personally, and, and I advise other people to do the same, right? Uh, like when I tell people, I, I never want you buying a gun for the day or tomorrow, right? I don't want you buying a gun because of a, a particular threat that you perceive, right? The, the firearm is for any threat, right? Because you could be worried about the Trumpers, and it'd be to do with no political affiliation is robbing you, mm-hmm. right? So um, I, I don't think that, A, that I don't think that that's a, I'm, I can't tell somebody what the reason is. But I don't think that's a standalone reason. And you can even challenge the validation of it to say, oh, OK, now I need to carry a gun because then you're setting yourself up for prejudice. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you see somebody, you know, wearing a MAGA hat, then all of a sudden you're on edge with them. Right. Because you're the one I got this gun for. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so I don't I don't think that that's necessarily a healthy mentality to have. So I think that um, uh, people should relax on that. Uh, chill out. You should be ready to deal with any threat because I don't care if you're wearing a Biden hat, a Trump hat, an Obama hat, a Bush hat, or a Reagan hat, or whatever, um, I'm not going to look at you like any more of a threat than the person walking their poodle down the street, because they could be the one that's actually out there to do harm to you. So, um, now we don't want to set in our minds what a threat looks like, right? Because every time you see someone that represents that, you're going to act out of character. You're probably actually going to cause a confrontation, right? And you're going to try to find a way to justify the reason why you're being on edge with that individual. So we, we can't look at people or a group of people and say, you're the problem. If somebody is going to cause harm to you, that is a threat right then and there. Mm-hmm. And you deal with that threat accordingly, not, oh my God, you're wearing make America great again, or you're wearing a, you, you know, I saw a Trump flag on the back of your truck. So let me go ahead and put my hand on my gun because you're who I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. I, I, I got to disagree with that. Yeah. Imagine the person who got a gun because they think some scary black guy is going to do something to them. Same thing. Exactly. Right. And we have we have people that do that. Right. And they're idiots. And I tell them that all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, they'll 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 use certain certain things and certain ways to say certain stuff. And I'm like, (laughs) realistically, you're you're an idiot. Um, You need to really relax and understand that any threat from anywhere. Hell, it might be a tiger that gets you because there are tigers. People have tigers in our country. Uh, I watched it. You know, (laughs) yeah, like a tiger might get loose. Right. Are you going to be like, well, the tiger wasn't wearing a MAGA hat, so I didn't shoot it. As it mauled me, like that's no, no. Yeah, you don't, you don't. Hey, what? Go ahead. Well, let's clarify something though, real quick, Katie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you agree with me a little bit. But you say, uh, what do you consider that? Like stereotypic, like you know how you sometimes mm-hmm. that sometimes that saves lives, though. You know, I mean, it is what it is. Oh, the I mean, stereotype. I mean, People. Uh, well, uh, sometimes. Some, in a, in a way, but the dude, person that you stare at, so the person that you stereotype is not always necessarily the opposite of you. So he may, so, he, yeah. He may so not as be. as a, a yeah as a black man, you know my my children. I have my kids are like twenty twenty one years old, right? And and they dress just like most uh, other young folks out there do. The person yeah. who I might have to defend my life against may look just like me or just like one of my without sons. Yeah, without without a without a doubt. Mm-hmm. And that's when that's and that's what I'm saying because mm-hmm. I just want to clarify this really quick because, uh, Katie, uh, just 
I, I know what it's like for when I'm around that age group and mm-hmm. I, I, it just is what it is. You see, you see individuals and sometimes that may save your life. You see a guy, he got his hat cocked to the side or you see a, a white guy and he got all these tattoos on you on his arms and he got a SWAT sticker and you know, his hat cocked to the side, not about race. It's just sometimes that stuff like that may in particular save your life. Because I know one thing I'm going to look at anyone strange who approaches me like that. I'm not saying that I'm going to have my hand on my gun, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I'm also, it also is going to make me aware. So wearing, looking appropriate and sometimes people know what that hat means you know don't get me wrong i don't have nothing against nobody i love everybody mm-hmm. just is what it is i don't care what race color gender religion none of that but you know what you're doing when you're wearing that certain type of hat if i have on a make america great again, great again hat or if i have on a black lives matter hat whatever the case is sometimes people are going to look at you a little off mm-hmm. and you got to be prepared for that so understanding you make the constant decision to make sure you together before you leave out the house and if you gonna put if you're gonna put that hat on if i'm gonna put this noc hat on i know somebody don't like kd got in well look i'm just i'm just taking that chance that day but just make sure you had a right mindset you got the right thinking behind it i think it all goes back to mindset yeah. too regardless. a little bit of fear is a healthy thing and 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 people things, thing at the same time. things that people be. wear can indicate things to you there's bloods and crips out there there's you know sure yeah there's a, he got it well i think what thinks. we're talking about when you start talking when you start talking about that kind of stuff you're talking about more instincts than anything right mm-hmm. so um you you yeah we all we all come from different areas have different experiences that certain things alert us right they get they get us on, you know, a little bit more like, OK, you know, let's 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 watch this thing. But that's more of instincts and understanding what may or may not have a potentially slightly higher chance of being a threat to you. But the way that uh, the question was phrased is about, you know, a, a, a group of people. Right. So if, if we are going to um, start allowing our prejudice or our thought of what we've seen being splashed on media and we all know what media does a great job of doing. Um, yeah. then you can set yourself up to be at an extra heightened level. Never challenge your instincts, mm-hmm. but be very careful about walking around with a heightened sense of prejudice. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There's, now, a, there's, a, a, there's a big difference between yeah. the imaginary person or group and then the yeah. real person in front of you acting, talking, uh, dressed a certain way or whatever, or with it in a certain scenario that you're in, right? Dark alley, middle of the night or whatever. I mean, if we're, if we're all looking at a Batman movie and his and 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 his parents are going down the alley. We all know what's going to happen, right? Sure. Yeah. Versus like you're doing something from a safe position and you're imagining something that's going to happen to you. Um. I, okay, Armand, I see you want to jump in here, and plus, I would like to hear what how you guys would respond to this. Okay. So the first thing is, I want to meet in the middle with KD and Mike. Mm-hmm. Um. One of uh one of the first people that I ever got introduced to in the firearms industry. He told me, um, you want to respect every man and have a plan to kill him. Mm-hmm. Yep. So this is so that meets the criteria for what both of them just said. I'm going to respect everybody and I treat everybody as they could be a threat. So I prepare myself mm-hmm. for what they could possibly do to me. Mm-hmm. That's that's definitely you know, that way we're not being prejudiced to a certain group of people. And at the same time, we're still protecting ourselves for that itchy feeling, that that spidey sense that goes off. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I feel that I deal with this a majority of the time with my, my class. A lot of people will, um, they have that fear. And that's why our classes continuously sell out and different things like that. And I'm not feeding into it because of that simple reason. The one thing I will tell people is just to get prepared. You never know where it's going to come from. And just by uh, proximity of where you live and what it is that you do, you probably will never meet that rural country MAGA person or that rural country uh, MAGA extremists because they don't want to be around you as well just as much as you don't want to be around them so it's a proximity issue you need to work on the threat that is at your front doorstep kind of like what you were saying mm-hmm. right? yeah and one of the things I just want to say like I, I don't know what the rest of you guys think but 
I don't think that someone being MAGA or being a Trump supporter makes them. I mean, I've seen lots of black people that are Trump supporters. And this, I remember looking at the videos with MAGA Hulk. I didn't even know there was this massive, massive, super muscle bound black dude. Did you guys ever hear of MAGA Hulk? Yeah, I've seen him a couple of times. Yeah, I've never, I never heard of it. And then I stumbled across a video and there's, so there's lots of people that, that go in that direction. At the same time, there's a lot of people who don't like, so if we're worried about someone not liking black folks, for for example, there's a lot of people that feel that way and they don't have any indicators (laughs) that's going to show you that they don't like you because of your skin color. So I think I, I agree with what you said, like be prepared because everyone is potentially your enemy, the government. Uh, people who look just like you, people opposite from you, you know, you, you have no clue where that's coming from. Uh, go ahead. You Kevin. Know what? Mm-hmm. I, go, I go to a lot of I'm in a I'm in a lot of different type of places than what I grew up in. I'm, I'm always in a country. I'm, I'm always in cities. I'm, I'm all over the place in all kind of different environments. And, and here's the thing. Um, if you take even the gun out of it for a second. Make sure if you are encountering somebody that has a different uh, viewpoint of life, instead of being like, and I agree, don't get me wrong, you should have a, a plan to defend yourself at all times. Uh, but you should also, instead of trying to see where you can, you know, challenge them or, or what you can fight them on, figure out the stuff you guys got in common, right? Mm. And start from there. And then you, a lot of times you will notice that it's not really that big of a deal. You don't have to worry about them any more than anybody else. Figure out what you like. Do you, do you like to cook? Do you you like guns? Do you, do you like to fish? Or do you want to learn more about it? Because one thing I've noticed with people that um, that when I go into their areas and they're more familiar with doing outdoorsy stuff, they love to share that, right? Mm-hmm. We don't, I don't even have to talk to them about their political affiliation. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I want to go hunt. They're like, like when? Like now? We can go. Yeah. Right? Like, so, <laughs> yeah. You know, like, like find something about people that you actually can learn from. People love to share information. They love to share information, right? So find something that you that you can learn from them or find something that you guys actually have in common. And I think that if we did that more than um, in general looking at the news or, or taking our perceived notions about people, we can get further. Because let's be honest, we don't like it when people do it to us. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't mm-hmm. like I don't I still to this day. I don't like when people clutch their purse because I'm walking by. Right. I'm not going to steal your purse. Lady. You, you, I'm the one that's going to protect your person being stolen. Mm-hmm. Right? right. So we don't want it done to us. So next time you interact with somebody, you know, a if the rule does come into the city, you know, and you're having an exchange or interaction with them, figure out what you guys have in common, man, and then work from there. Better way when you start talking about what you disagree about, it's less personal, right? You got a, a base to work off of. Yeah, uh, Kermit Loves Bacon says, is that really what you guys think uh, for, I, I'm guessing he wants to say about, is that really what you guys think about people who voted for, for Trump? Um, I'm not, I, I can tell you one thing, <laughs> I definitely don't think that because I voted for Trump, so. Uh, both times. <laughs> said anything negative about yeah. Trump yeah. support no, and talking yeah. about the stereotype right. uh, that be. the yeah. the person that asked Hank yeah. what it is that he believed. Yeah. So that's what we're that's, that's what we're talking to here. We're talking to to that to that person who's thinking in, in that vein that now they're all of a sudden activated. And for this whole conversation, we've been talking about these eight million new people, and what we have to understand. Is a lot, a lot of that eight million are people that they're doing it for exactly that reason. Yeah, yeah. and for yeah. those eight million people that are, if they are watching this, if they do, mm-hmm. what Kate and I challenged KD on what he said, but I, he, KD was not wrong. Mm-hmm. I wish we can do that more. I like you say, see what you got in common. Hey mm-hmm. man, I, that's a nice hat, but hey, those shoes you got on. Well, I see you got to open your open carrying your gun, which I don't like. But still, you open carry your gun. What kind of gun is it? Hey, I, I got that type. You know, just, just yeah. engage in a conversation yeah. instead of just being so quiet. Speak. Open your mouth. Say something. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, just have, it's hard just for some. That. It's hard for someone to kill you if they're looking at you and making a eye connection with you and talking to you. It's not impossible. I mean, there's psychos out there. Right. But but it's you know, you can solve a lot of problems like that. I mean, I grew up in New York City and I did a lot of things I'm not supposed to do. And I had my run ins with cops and stuff like that. And a lot of those situations I walked away from because I just talked to them, you know, and, and that's really important. When you talk to people, you disarm them. Right. And and I found myself doing that a lot with uh, with cops, for example. And then they wouldn't go, yeah, uh, get out of the car. Let me search you. Because if they if they would have done that, I would have been in jail. So, uh, listen, say, go ahead. One funny thing, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Katie, the funny thing you've been bringing up, the tires, it got uh, tigers. <laughs> it got me remembering 
um, when I was in police academy, they almost deputized us. Uh, I went to police academy up in Ohio, and they almost deputized us because a dude had let his tigers go mm -hmm. in <laughs> Ohio, and, and we were the closest to him. So they was going to deputize us and give us guns. Yeah. To go out here and shoot tigers and lions and bears. Yeah, that's some oh that's some training because I yeah you don't actually know what that gun's gonna do for you when a tiger is charging you. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole different experience, Michael. I want to get your answer from this. I know we're running a little bit over time. The reason why I asked this question is. I really think that, you know, this is a great opportunity for us here to have that conversation and have the people in the audience and maybe some other people listen to this. So I want to know from you, Mike, what's your answer to, to this thing that I post? Uh, I'm, I didn't even get I'm sorry. Yeah. So to go back to that guy who who got in touch with me and said that he wanted to get a gun. And I'm, I just want like if someone got in touch with you and they say, hey, I want to get a gun. I want to get into this because of what happened back in D.C. a couple of weeks ago. And I'm worried that these Trumpers are coming for me or whatever. Yeah, I got you. OK, uh, man, I've been getting a lot of that, especially when people come like, OK, you get fear buying. Fear, fear buying is. You, you, we see a lot of that now. All these, most of these gun owners. In fact, I've had people run to me, call me, blow up my phone, like just based off of them just fear buying. Mm -hmm. People, calm down, mm -hmm. <laughs> calm down. I don't really think that I, I, it's serious. Don't get me wrong. I what happened was, you know, it was serious. But at the same time, like when you re, when you react so fast like that and you don't just slow down the thing. And on top of that, you should already had a gun. That's one. You shouldn't buy a gun just based off in one event. I mean, that's just one situation that happened. There's so many different things. Like KD was even saying, there's some different. There's so many different, you know, stuff. Some so many different things going on that you know you need a gun for. And you know, and like you say, uh, Hank, not all guns don't solve all problems. Mm -hmm. You may not need a gun for so many different reasons. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's so many. It's a responsibility. It's so many things that go, you know, along with just even having that gun. So I mean, I feel like if you're gonna buy a gun, don't buy a gun based off of one event buy a gun um to for so many different other things i mean guns save lives i mean buy, buy a gun for a better reason for one mm -hmm. you know you got family you got loved ones you know buy a gun so you come back home to your family buy a gun for there's so many different other reasons not just based off one event so mm -hmm. that's how i feel about it yeah I think, I mean, there's one good reason I would say to someone to not buy a gun. If you're angry and you want to hurt someone, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. not the reason to buy one. Um, this situation, like what I, what I did say to my friend's dad was, you know what? I'm glad you came to this, but I just want you to, to answer these questions. And, you know, I was like, I don't know if you got to go, Ke uh, Kevin, but I could see the wife mm -hmm. trying to give you some kind of signal back there. But, uh, no, she's just letting me know she's back in the house. Oh, okay, cool. So one of the things I said to him is, you know, you're here. We're, I'm in Gainesville. He's in Gainesville. I was like, if you go to your local gun store right now to buy this gun, tell me who do you think is running that store? And he's like, what do you mean who's running the store? I was like, tell me tell me about that person. Just imagine who, who are they? Are, are they black or are they white? He was like, well, it's probably a white guy. I was like, okay, do you think they are Republican or Democrat? <laughs> And he's like, oh, they're probably a Republican. I was like, do you think they maybe voted for Trump? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, they probably voted for Trump. And I said, <laughs> OK, so here's the thing about that. You're going to go to the store and I could already tell you what's going to happen. You're going to go there and they're going to show you things and they're going to be courteous, answer your questions and they're going to help you. And you could buy a gun from them and then they will point you in the direction of training. And he was like, OK. And I was like, what makes you think that person's your enemy? You know, mm. and so that that was my that was my answer to him. But I said, listen, still, I hope that you get into this because, like Michael said, you actually need to get into this, right? And it's not the I know a lot of folks out here are gonna say, well, this is a really the wrong reason. It's a bad reason, but it's not the worst reason. And once you yeah. get into this and you start meeting people and doing like what Kevin Dixie is saying, and and all of you guys are saying that, hey, when you start talking to people and figuring out who people are and seeing different people and realizing what you have in common. You know, it changes a lot of things. As um, as folks are saying here, I see a lot of people have some good comments on this. I just want everyone to know, in the end of, of, of Trump's thing, and I'm not trying to be all pro-Trump with you guys. I've had my things to say about him, but he pardoned some rappers. <laughs> okay? Go ahead. Let's realize that. 
<laughs> okay? So, I mean, you you know, it's everything out there is not exactly what you think it is. You know, everything is not Absolutely. what the media is telling you. So you, you folks out there just really want to think about this and put this um, into your uh, overall equations about your life. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.